Now, if you're like me, when you started with lacquer paints, you probably used some pre-thin paints to begin with. Well, today I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process to get you guys up and running with whatever paints that you want. And I'm gonna show you guys how I pre-thin my paints and store them for future use. Let's get it. What's going on everybody? Plama Therapist here, helping you guys to build happiness with your plastic model kits. Today, I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process of how I take my paint jars and I go ahead and turn them into pre-thin paints that are airbrush ready, no matter what brand you guys are using. So, without further ado, let's head over to my workstation and get started. Now here's a sample of the end product, what it's gonna look like. And before we can get to this point where we have our labels on our bottles and our paints pre-thinned, we're gonna need a couple tools that are gonna help us along the way. Now obviously the first thing we're gonna to need today is our paints. Today I'm gonna to be using the Anchor Paint Line as well as the Mr. Hobby Finishing Surfacer to practice thinning primers, but the techniques we're gonna be using can apply to any paint such as the Nazca that I've included here. The next thing you're gonna need is your thinner. Today I'm gonna to be using Mr. Hobby's Mr. Color Leveling Thinner as well as the Moto Color Series for the Anchor Paints. Next up, you're gonna need your paint bottles. Now, you can go with the generic one if you want, but if you're unsure of which ones you can trust, I highly recommend these Kaizo bottles because they're graduated, meaning they have the measurements on the side, which are really good when you're trying to measure out your ratios. The next thing you're gonna need is a paint mixer, and this is great for getting those jars open if they get stuck, but it's also to get some of that stuck pigment that may be settled down at the bottom that the blender balls can't quite get. The next thing you're gonna need is your paint mask because even though you're not spraying the paint, the fumes are still very strong and you wanna make sure you protect your lungs. The last thing we're gonna really need is gonna be the X-Acto knife and this is what we're gonna to use to get our labels off of our jars and onto our final bottles. Now, if you're like me and you're worried you're gonna make a mess, you can throw in a set of paper towels and some gloves to keep yourself clean and to clean up any mistakes. So we're all set up to get started on thinning out the Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Gray. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of walk you through the process um, before I put my mask on and go ahead and do these things. So as I mentioned before, the mask is important because when you're dealing with the lacquer paints as well as the thinners, the fumes are still very strong. And that's why you wanna make sure you keep your um, mask on when you're doing these things. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour the jar of Mr. Finishing Surfacer into the bottle. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the thinner to the jar first, shake it up and get a lot of that excess paint that's still left over, then pour that into the bottle. Now, the ratio that I use is I use one part paint or primer for the Mr. Hobby, the Nazca, and the Gaia. So I do one part paint and then one and a half parts thinner. So if you could see on this jar, what it says here is, I believe this is a 50 milliliter, this is a 40 milliliter bottle, it says it there. Um, so what that means is basically 40 milliliters of paint plus one and a half times that for um, thinner. So that's going to be 60 milliliters of thinner. So kind of roughly is going to make about 100 um, milliliters of pre-thinned thinner. So if you see this bottle, it goes up to 250. And so I have three jars here, which is going to give me just enough to completely fill the jar 100% of the way. So. I'll go ahead and do these things. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you one without any of the blender balls that the bottle comes with. I'm gonna do one with the blender ball, and then I'm gonna do one when the blender ball falls out, just to kind of show you what to do if that does happen. So I'm gonna mask up, go ahead and get started, and you guys can just follow along with me when you guys go ahead and do your paints. So mask is up just around my neck. Um, generally when I'm doing this, what I'll do is I usually only put a glove on one hand because usually this is the hand that gets a lot of the paint on it. But because um, I'm doing I'm doing this tutorial, I want to show you that you guys should put just two gloves on, makes it easier to keep your hands clean. So get both gloves on. That makes it less likely and less generally to get paints on your fingers if you do, not that big an issue. And then that way you can just keep your hands protected from any of the chemicals and whatnot. And that way you don't have paints on your hands when you go back to work. So, all right, mask up, let's get started. Now, first off, I wanna apologize. I got really excited just kind of diving into it, mixing paints here that I forgot to take out the blender balls before um, pouring the first jar of primer in, which is okay because um, I'll go ahead and demonstrate with the end credits how to use the blender balls when mixing your um, paints. Now, 
as you see, I'm not really um, measuring anything out. I'm just kind of pouring it into the jar and I'm eyeballing what the level of the paint was in the jar before going ahead and adding the thinner. And the reason being is that even though the jar itself is a 40 milliliter jar, the paint doesn't completely fill it all the way up. So you're roughly looking at about 30 milliliters of paints and it's gonna be really evident when we get close to the end of the, um, the jar here and the bottles because what you're going to see is I'm not going to come up all the way to the top of the jar but I'm actually going to come up to about the 250 milliliter mark which kind of roughly comes out to where I need to be so as you can see I just kind of mix it in just kind of give it a good shake and then from there just open it up and pour it straight into the jars now some people like to use the paint stirrers um, to help kind of aid the paint going into the jar but these are thin enough that I don't have that issue in making sure that I need to get the paint to go perfectly down the middle. And as you guys can see here, I'm not having a lot of paint excess running down the outside of the jar. The thinner may be a little bit of excess runoff, but definitely no issues with the paint. And as you can see there, again, I just kind of fill it up, eyeballing it again. It's not an exact science. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. And these are the ratios that I like. And so if you want to try something else, you can go ahead and do your own thing. But that's what I like. As you can see here, I'm using the paint mixer here to kind of scrape off a little bit of the excess of the jar that's kind of built up around the neck of the bottle. And that's pretty common for a lot of the jars that don't have stoppers in them. You'll notice that the necks are gonna have some paint stuck in it. So just take your paint mixer, go ahead and scrape off a little bit, tilt the jars to get some of that thinner up there so you can kind of just make sure you get the most out of each and every jar so that you're not sending any to waste. Okay, so we're all set up to do the anchor at paint next. And the thinning ratio for these are actually one part paint to four parts thinner. So when you see the paint come out of this jar, you're gonna realize that this paint is actually really thick. And even when I shake it, you don't even hear it like sloshing around in there. So it's good because when you get something this thick, you get a lot more paint out of it per jar versus something like the Nazca paints where you know, the jar is a, a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller, but you're not gonna get nearly as much paint because you're not using nearly as much thinner. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and mask back up. And what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna add the blender ball that's in the bottle here, and I'm gonna add it to the jar to show you how that kind of helps to get all the paint out. So I'll go ahead and mask up and then we'll go ahead and get started. So just as, as I mentioned earlier, um, I had a little bit of trouble getting the paint stopper out of this jar. So you go ahead and take your paint mix and you can just lever it up under the lip there and then go ahead and pry it open there just like that. Now, as you can see, I got the blender ball and I just dumped it straight into the paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the paint stopper back in, get the cap back on, get it nice and tight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just shake it with the blender ball inside. Now, um, once that's done, just kind of helps loosen up a little bit of the paint a little bit better you can go ahead and just go ahead and dump it straight in. Now I'm actually gonna go ahead and pause it right here because I wanna talk about my pouring style and how I don't use the paint mixer. So normally what I do is on the jar, there's a little bit of like the lip and the ridges from the um, threading that's there on the jar. And what I do is I line up the paint jar on the second threading. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna help get that lip just up and over the um, center of the jar enough that it doesn't start to run over the edges. It doesn't start to run over the sides. And this works for the Nazcas. This has worked for um, the Anchorage, as you see here. This is what I did for the Mr. Hobby, um, the primers and everything. So that's generally my little trick on what I do in order to paint, um, to sorry, pour my paints into the jars and into my bottle. So that way um, I don't ever have to use my paint mixer and I can actually hold the bottle in place and not lose that and have that spill over. Now letting the video play again, you can see here, just look at how thick that paint is coming out into that jar. Probably one of the most satisfying things for me about mixing my own paints is just kind of getting to pour that paint out into the jar. And these anchorettes are really rewarding. So um, I'll go ahead and just kind of pour it out into the jar and just kind of let it run until the, um, the run of the paint gets really thin where I can kind of just flip the jar around and then go ahead and whip it up. Now, because the paints are really thick, I'll go ahead and wipe up the bottle because that little bit of paint just kind of got on the edge and I like to keep it clean. So the next thing I'm going to do is again, I'm going to add the thinner over into the jar and I'm going to pause it right here as well. 
to talk about why I'm pouring my paint out like this. Now, as you can see, the spout is at the top as opposed to the bottom because it gives me better control over how much thinner comes out versus when it's at the bottom, it's all or nothing. And this is actually something I picked up watching Frosted Snow's video um, about thinning my own paint. So if you want, I'll go ahead and link that video up in the corner so you can check out some of the things that I've learned watching her videos. Anyway, the rest of the process is gonna be exactly the same. You're gonna go ahead and just pour your thinner into the jar, give it a good shake, and then pour that thin paint out into the bottle there. Repeat this process until you get the correct ratio that you want, and then go ahead and just cap it up and call it done. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is how I take off my labels to get them put on the bottles like this. And this is where that hobby knife is gonna come in because what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut the label completely off the glass. And what I mean by that is basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna run your knife down the length of the, de the, um, the label like this on both sides, and then you're gonna peel it up almost exactly like a decal. So for this, what I like to do is I'll just take the knife, I'll kind of line up the blade usually along a parallel like this, so along the warning label. I'll give it a push down and just kind of pull the knife straight down. That's gonna do is it's gonna help me to get a clean line. And then eventually what I do is I just go back over it with the tip of the knife to get that label exactly cut out how I want it to. Now as you can see there, it's starting to pull the label off, which is exactly what I want, but not quite yet. So I'm gonna come back over to this side. I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's get this line nice here. Now most people will try to get the entire label off and have all the warnings and things like that, but I just kind of go with just the important information that I need. So I'll cut off all the excess. And the reason this works is because it, the glass is hard. You're not going to cut through that. And it's going to give you a nice clean line to get through. So once I get through that, all I'm going to do is just take my blade under the corner here, lift it up like a decal, just like that. And go ahead and peel very slowly. And you wanna peel slowly to make sure that you don't accidentally leave behind any of that excess um, adhesive on the jar. You wanna make sure it all comes off with the label like that. Once you do that, you can go ahead and transfer it to your bottle. There you have it. It's not perfectly straight, but it's on there. It tells me what's in the jar and that's the important part. And there you have it. That's how you can cut out your labels so you can label your bottles. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video, leave a like. It lets me know you're finding value in this content. If you haven't done so already and you wanna stay up to date on any time I come out with a new video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss a thing. Finally, let me know what paint brands do you think you wanna try out in the future. Drop them down in the comments below and let me know if you gotta pre-thin those or not. Anyway, let's get back to the workstation for a bonus tip on using your extra paint jars. Bonus tip, when you finish mixing all your paints, you're gonna have a lot of leftover jars. And one of the things you can do is you can use the jars for mixing your own batches of paint. Now, this one here, I'm not gonna use it for that because another thing you can use these jars for is if you mess up or you make a mistake, what you can do is you can fill these with um, isopropyl alcohol, or even the Vallejo paint thinner that they have, which is alcohol based. What you can do is fill them up with a little bit of that solution, put a piece in here that you wanna strip the paint for, and what I'll do is I'll take it right back down to the bare plastic, and then you can go ahead and start over again. So, as you can see, there's still kind of a bit of residue in here left over, right? Still a little bit of that paint left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my hardware store lacquer thinner, and I'm just gonna go ahead, add a good, amount of it to the jar here and then just like I did before with the paint I'll go ahead and give it a good shake basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just get as much of it off the walls as I can now if you want you can go ahead and add more it just makes cleanup just a little bit more difficult but I'll show you another trick that I've done for a lot of my paints and especially when I paint um, airbrushing what you can do is you can take your jar if you have a lot of paint left over, kind of swirl it around in there. Then you can take a paper towel, like the one you've been using thus far. What you can go ahead and do is just wipe up all that excess paint and all that excess thinner. So just go ahead, start with the lip right around the mouth here. And then eventually what I can do is I can go ahead, 
just get this into the jar and as you can see it's already starting to kind of mop up a lot of all of that excess primer that's still left in the jar and just get my finger in there make sure that's nice and clean if there's still some paint left over like you can see go ahead just add some more of that thinner oops that's more of that thinner give it a little bit of a shake get it to kind of take off a lot of the paint that's stuck to the walls and then again if you want you can use the same paper towel if there's still if it's still dry enough or take a fresh paper towel go ahead and just wipe up all that excess now normally I'd use a glove but I'm trying to save up on gloves because I got a lot of paint jobs coming up I don't want to go out and buy new gloves right now so just go ahead and wipe it up now as you can see I feel like I'm wiping up but not a lot's coming off so always double check the outside of the jar too and what this is good for too is if there's any leftover adhesive you can go ahead and clean it off just like that Once it's done, make sure you check the cap because sometimes there's some paint left over on the cap and you don't want to have any of that left over, especially if you're going to be mixing your own paint in here. Because this is going to be a strip jar to strip some paints, it doesn't matter too much if I get all the paints out, but just kind of for demonstration purposes, just make sure I get all of it out there. There you have it, a nice empty jar if you want to mix your own paint or add some thinner to make a little strip batch. There you go, bonus tip. So there you have it guys, a quick video on how you guys can pre-thin your paints no matter what brand you're using. Remember, drop down in the comments below any brand that you think you want to try to thin for yourselves and maybe we can have a discussion on best thinning ratios. Anyway, that's it for me today guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found some value in this content. Remember, take care of yourselves, take care of the people around you and I'll see you in the next one.